Good day and welcome back to another Epic 7 video. In this video we're going to take a look at equipment and everything you need to know about equipment as well as when you should consider upgrading equipment. Now this is going to be a basics guide but it will cover some advanced topics so be prepared to take it slow, watch it in increments and yeah basically just work your way through it with me so that you can kind of see what's going on. But let's start with the basics of gear. Now there's a couple things you need to understand about gear and the biggest or the most important basics are two things. Firstly, the little number in the top left hand corner of the gear indicates its item level or tier. Uh, when people talk about tier for gear, they are talking about the little number at the top left. When we talk about the kind of grade uh, of gear, we are talking about the color that the gear has. And this can range essentially from a couple basics. It's normal, uncommon in green, rare in blue, heroic in purple, and red in epic. This determines how many substats your gear can have or starts with mainly. For example, red gear starts with four substats, whereas blue gear will start with two substats. This is irrelevant of the level of the gear. The number in the top will indicate the tier, and to explain it a little bit for you, Tier 1 gear is 1 to 15, tier 2 is 16 to 30, tier 3 31 to 45, tier 4 46 to 60, tier 5 61 to 75, tier 6 76 to 90, and tier 7 90 and above. Now 90 and above gear is incredibly rare so we mainly deal with tier 6. Now in terms of gear, the biggest number and the most important is the level. The reason the level is the most important is because this is what determines your stat gain on your main stats and substats. Now let's talk about stats and let's start with main stats. Firstly it's important to understand that gear is divided into two sections for ease of discussion. You get left hand side gear and right hand side gear. Left hand side gear is the sword or weapon, the helm and the body. These have set main stats. For example, weapon always has attack, helm always has health, and armor always has flat defense. You then get right hand sided gear. These pieces of gear have fluctuating main stats, and these pieces of gear are very important when we talk about high level builds, because these are going to determine a very large portion of your stat distribution. Right hand sided gear includes the necklace, ring, boots, now, Artifact is on the right hand side, but it's not really functioning the same way. These pieces of gear inherently will have different main stats, and necklaces, rings, and boots can all roll a variety of stats, essentially, for you to have as your main. Now, you get flat stats and percentage-based stats. Generally, percentage-based is considered better, but flat stats can sometimes be considered better for certain units depending on the stat. Speed will only ever roll as a flat stat and an important thing is that a piece of gear cannot roll a main stat into the substat category. So if you roll speed for main stat for gear, you can't get it as a substat. This is something that's super important. Now main stats and how main stats work is very simple. Whatever main stat your gear starts with, when it hits max level it will have five times that amount of gear. So for example, this neck piece started with 10% attack and now has 50% attack at main level. And this is the same across all grades and all tiers. Now, it's very important to understand that most or necklaces, ring and shoes can roll any stat as their main stat, generally speaking, except for a couple exceptions. Necklaces can roll crit damage and crit chance, but cannot roll effectiveness. Rings can roll effectiveness, but cannot roll crit and shoes cannot roll crit or effectiveness, but can roll all the other main stats. This is very important when you're deciding what to upgrade. But now let's talk about substats. Substats are the little secondary stats or smaller tech stats that you see under the main stat of gear. Now substats are a little bit different to how stats work. Firstly, substats or your starting substats are determined by the grade of your gear. For example, as mentioned before, Blue gear or rare gear starts with two bonus substats instead of one, whereas epic gear or red gear starts with four. When all gear is fully upgraded except for uncommon, which is gray gear, you will have four 
bonus substats always. The big difference between the grades of gear is that when you're upgrading substats on an epic piece of gear, the big difference is that it will have multiple chances to upgrade those stats. And we'll talk about that in the upgrading section. A very important thing to understand is that the substats on gear is determined by the gear itself. For example, weapons cannot roll defensive substats, whereas helmets cannot roll offensive substats. Well, sorry, armor cannot roll offensive substats. Helmets, however, can roll both. All of them can roll effective resistance and effectiveness, so it's important to understand those stats. Necklaces, rings, and shoes can roll any stat possible except for the main stat that is currently on the gear. Artifacts are not so important. Artifact, well, in terms of stats, artifacts are very important, but the big thing with artifacts is they gain a flat stat gain of attack and health depending on how many levels they go up. This is determined by ultimately the grade of the gear. So if, for example, you're leveling a five star artifact, the total stats it will give you are higher than others, but not by much. It's not a huge factor in the determination of things. The big thing is actually the ability level which is determined by your limit break level of your artifact gear. Now let's talk about understanding sets because before we talk about anything else we need to understand how sets work because sets are truly something that's quite important. Now how sets work is you get either a four piece set or a two piece set. Four piece sets require you to have four pieces of the same set of gear. For example, critical uh, rate requires two pieces of gear sets, however, attack requires four pieces of gear sets. What this means is that to initiate the bonus from the set, which for example in speed situation is a 25% speed increase to the overall speed stat, you need to have all four pieces or four pieces of your six pieces being speed sets. Now because you can roll gear in any set piece, you don't need to have a specific makeup to these sets. For example, if I want my speed set to be helmet, body, legs, and weapon, it can be. It could also easily be ring, necklace, boots, and helm. It doesn't matter the makeup, the set never affects the stats of the item. So rolling speed sets isn't going to give you more chance at rolling speed as a main stat. It is entirely only the basis of the bonus that you get. So you can roll whatever set you want, Defensive sets can give as much attack stats as any other normal set. The big difference is the bonus that it gives you. It doesn't actually affect the stats of the rolled, which is pretty important. Something else that's also important is understanding when to give a unit multiple two-piece sets or a two-piece and a four-piece. The general concept is that giving a four-piece and a two-piece is the most effective use for some units. However, in some situations, depending on where the unit is used, Three two-piece sets is also more than acceptable as well. Generally speaking, having uh, no sets is not considered an effective itemization strategy because most times you want to have a set active. Generally speaking, not having sets active is not something that's advisable and most times you'll end up sitting in a situation where your units are inefficient. Here's an example of Crozet who's running a three-piece HP set. These are additive and not multiplicative. So all three 20% are added together to give 60% of the original HP stat. They are not multiplied. So you don't get 20% additional and then 20% additional on top and 20% additional on top, just to kind of give you an idea. Most units will be running a four set and a two piece as this is generally considered the most practical use of set bonuses. However, again, it just depends on the unit. Now let's talk about upgrading gear and this is a very important section so I hope you're able to pay attention because it does have quite a large impact on when you decide to upgrade your gear and how you upgrade it. Now the first thing to understand is that the main stat, that is for example attack on the sword, will upgrade every level. However the amount it upgrades is not the same. As equipment gets upgraded the higher the level the larger the stat increase. For example earlier on it's akin to something like a 4% increase. However, the final level up, the level 15 upgrade, is a 15% increase, which means in total, like I said before, all main stats will be upgraded to a total of five times their original stat. This is 
obviously something super important. The next most important concept to understand is that main stats do not differentiate between grade of gear, but only through tier of gear. So for example, this blue piece, when it's fully maxed out, gives the same amount of HP stat or health stat as a purple piece. This is because the stats are determined by the level, not by the grading. The grading merely affects the substats. However, grade is very important because if you have a red grade piece of gear, you will have more chances to upgrade the set substats of that gear. However, what this also means is that early on when you're starting your game, if you have a good purple piece, they can very much compete with red pieces and blue pieces can also sometimes compete with red pieces, depending on how lucky you get with the additive stat bonuses. So don't throw those pieces of gear away in the beginning and just remember to kind of keep an eye on them. Now, let's talk about upgrading and how it affects the item's substats. So substats for an item are only upgraded every three levels. And now if the substats are upgraded is dependent upon the range of the gear. So for example, if we're looking at a purple gear, at level 12 they will always gain a new substat. This is a heroic piece. A epic piece will only ever receive substat enhancements every three levels. A rare piece of gear will receive two new substats at 9 and 12. For example, down, down, down and down. So the big thing is, obviously, when you're upgrading gear, firstly, are the substats going to be upgraded or are you going to obtain a new substat? This is why every three levels is quite a sizable jump in the piece of gear's power. If you receive a substat that's not suitable for a unit, this generally indicates that the gear is trending downwards in terms of upgrade, whereas if you receive a good substat upgrade, this means that the gear is starting to trend upwards and could become a very crucial piece. Let's kind of see that a little bit in action here. As you can see, upgrading this piece of gear by three levels will give me a new substat. Well, will give me a substat upgrade. This landed on attack, which could be considered pretty good for whichever unit I'm using it on. However, I very equally could have got that upgrade on effectiveness, which may not be useful for the unit that I'm wishing to upgrade. So it's going to depend a lot on what you do. So when you're upgrading gear, it's important to understand the big difference between substat gain every three levels and the an actual gain of stats every level. A lot of a piece of gear's power determines, especially on the right hand side, from the main stat. For example, if I'm rolling a necklace or these boots, a large gain is from the actual speed going up from 37 to 45, as this has a very large bearing on my performance in terms of the battle, whereas upgrading the substat is less important at that level. Now upgrading artifacts is a lot simpler and way less complicated. Upgrading artifacts is pretty straightforward. Artifacts have a max cap that is determined by essentially when you get them. They can all upgrade to 15. To upgrade them any further, you need to apply potions of knowledge to them. Now, applying potions of knowledge to them will increase their max enhance capabilities. Or, alternatively, you can use multiple copies of the same artifact if you're lucky enough. An example here is with the prophetic candlestick. Now, when you upgrade a item, you can upgrade all artifacts to a max level of 30. Upgrading them to level 30 enables you to upgrade their artifact skill to level 11 and an artifact skill will upgrade every three levels exactly. So what that means is to max out an artifacts level you need to get it to level 30. Now artifacts gain a large portion of their power from their level 3 gains. So the big thing with artifacts comparative to gear, gear has kind of a scaling gain whereas the later levels of upgrading gear is more valuable artifacts are a bit more flat. You only really want to upgrade them if you can upgrade them three levels because a large benefit comes from the incremental upgrade in the artifact skill. But they're not a priority because the artifact skills sometimes can really barely go up from a 30 to a 32 percent. Doesn't sound like a very big upgrade and that's because it's not. Next we kind of want to talk about upgrading efficiently. So that you know about upgrading gear you want to make sure you do it at a cost effective rate and this is done by using predominantly charms. When upgrading gear you have an option between using charms which you can obtain through various means but the most common is the sanctuary or you can choose to upgrade gear through what 
are basically amount to scraps these are essentially like little xp shards that you get from selling gear um, and these are way more expensive for example upgrading this piece of gear seven levels with these scraps cost me 156,000 gold whereas i can upgrade it eight levels with the charms for 129,000, and this continues in a scale up to the levels max so though the exp scraps are obviously helpful they are a far less efficient way to upgrade gear and if you find a good piece of gear it's much better to consider using charms on it than to use these scraps as you'll probably save yourself a couple hundred thousand gold per piece that's just a little bit of a word to the wise and there's something that most times should be able to assist you in terms of just saving some gold and crafting your gear efficiently now of course when we talk about obtaining the means to upgrade gear the two main ways are kind of as follows the first way is by scrapping gear. Now you can scrap gear or extract gear, and I'll cover that a little bit more in another video, but the big difference is selling gear gives you these EXP scraps, which are a more direct conversion, whereas extracting gear can be used for a multitude of purposes and is a more indirect version, but far more efficient. They are a best or better situation to extract or sell, and we'll talk about that later on. Getting charms is largely due to the Sanctuary and event rewards, so you should be getting them from the Sanctuary, but otherwise you get them predominantly from events. Now we're looking at reforging. Reforging is something you'll unlock later on when you hit account level 55. It will automatically unlock upon hitting account level 55, and reforging, basically what it does is it enhances a piece of gear. So you have to have the gear maxed out first, but once you do, you can then reforge the gear to increase its level cap and automatically upgrade all of its stats. You don't need to add more XP or charms to the gear, it will automatically upgrade to a higher level. Now what this does is it basically does a flat increase across the board along the main stats and substats in proportion with what they were originally. So what this means is you should only really reforge absolutely top top level gear that you're 100% convinced by because changing the stats in this gear can become very difficult later on and so it's much better to prioritize essentially reforging only your best gear pieces. Reforging is a more high-end kind of game mode. You need to be able to do high-end level hunts to very easily get the reforged materials or alternatively able to do high-end level expeditions to obtain them as well. So it's not something that's very easy to access However, reforging gear does have a huge stat boost for a lot of units. Now, alongside that, we also want to talk a bit about gear modification. This is something that's a little bit more advanced and I will probably talk about it in another video in a bit more detail, but gear modification has the big benefit of allowing you to change your substats. Gear modification is important because as mentioned before, your main stats are set and they increase in a set way. However, substats are obviously randomized. For example, when I craft gear, if I craft epic gear, it's four random main substats. If I craft purple gear, it gains a random substat. Now, modifying gear allows me to change the substats I have. However, it does not allow me to change the distribution of those stats. So, for example, it's better to modify gear that you get earlier on that could have a chance of being good gear rather than modifying it at the end. Modifying gear that occurs at the end generally is a more expensive and cumbersome task than modifying gear in the beginning because you can then have a bit more control of the chances of the upgrade falling on a stat that you want rather than a stat that you don't. This all kind of requires the sanctuary and requires you to understand the sanctuary a little bit more and so this is why this topic will be covered in a bit more detail in a separate video so if you are struggling with that we will take a look in more detail because I do feel like although it's something that's relatively straightforward to understand, understanding when to do it and how best to do it is something that requires its own kind of, you know, seven to eight minute discussion. Now, before we talk about how to know when to upgrade gear, I do want to talk about PvP gear as a concept. So PvP gear can be an incredibly useful tool for a lot of players. The big thing with PvP gear is two things. Firstly, it always comes at tier or level 88 which is obviously tier 6 but it also comes with very high level base stats and it comes with guaranteed substats so for example pvp gear always rolls 
those when you buy it it shows those stats so it has set main stats for right hand side gear and set sub stats what this means is pvp gear is a great way to balance out sets for beginning players it is far better to use your pvp currency on right hand side gear that being necklace rings and boots because you can then control the main stance of the road as well as having some semblance of control on these sub stats and this is very important for new players now let's talk about crafting gear because while we're talking about pvp crafting gear is also equally important now generally considered it is much better to craft left hand sided gear the reason why crafting left hand sided gear is a bit better is because crafting left hand sided gear you don't have to worry about the main stat so when you craft gear if i craft helmets or a sword or body i know i'm always getting the correct main stat because they don't have different main stats and that means my lottery is much more dependent on these sub stats that the gear gets than anything else so crafting left hand sided gear is considered far more optimal than crafting right hand sided gear so if you are someone who's crafting that's generally where you should be looking now of course you can still craft right hand sided gear especially in the beginning of the game it's not a big issue uh, to craft once or twice to get some pieces to complete sets or things like that but in the long run or especially as you start to progress through chapter three and four focusing on left hand sided gear with crafting while filling out your sets from the right hand side with pvp gear and other drops is more effective for you when gearing characters and it also requires you to farm hunts which requires you to build teams which also makes things a little bit more difficult now let's discuss when to upgrade your gear as this is probably the biggest question now back in the day you didn't have gear score and we now have this very interesting stack called gear score or equipment score and this was essentially a way to or is introduced as a way to kind of measure how good a piece of gear is so for example how good are its substats etc but let's talk a little bit about how to judge how good a piece of gear is now gear or how gear works is that substats can have a minimum and maximum level when you first roll a piece of gear substats have a max substat value of nine percent generally across the board uh, with some being you know eight or six percent if they are crit damage and crit chance whereas the minimum substat you can roll is five to four percent this is your first starting point if i create a piece of gear and it's a whole bunch of four and five percent and like two speed it's generally probably not a piece of gear i want to look at secondly speaking i want to know what kind of substats i have do those substats match to our units now the general rule of thumb especially if we look at just red gear if I create a piece of red gear and three out of the four stats are good, meaning they are in the nine to eight percent range, and if they are three of the four matching to what my character needs, that's a piece of gear I'm going to consider upgrading because chances are the substats, three out of four of them, could potentially upgrade, meaning it will be in line with the build I want for my character. So you need to obviously understand what your character needs first, but the big thing is understanding a the substat values and b having three out of the four substats i would say good what that also means is with purple gear if you already have those three stats aligning with your character you can kind of proceed with that as well now a couple of final mentions just because uh, people will be wondering but the stat values the minimum stat values for red or you know tier six gear i should say not just red gear but anything that's above level you know 85 is going to be 5%, 5%, and 5% for attack, defense, HP, resistance, and effect resistance, 4% for crit damage, and 4% for crit chance, and 2 for speed. Secondly, as well, converting set pieces and converting items is an effective strategy, but a lot of materials are going to come from hunting, and things like unique equipment, although super important, is a little bit of a separate thing from gearing up, so I haven't really discussed it too much. It's also important that you experiment and fiddle around with the Sanctuary. The Sanctuary contains both the Alchemist Steeple and contains the Blacksmith, both of which are going to be incredibly important tools. So learning things like how to upgrade materials into higher value materials, how to convert certain material that you'll need, and also how to create equipment and extraction gems and sets are all very crucial to your journey. And there are things I will cover in the future.
I will place them all in a list. So I will make one playlist literally entirely for gearing and cover every topic you need to know underneath there. Because I do think it is so important and it needs a separate section. Gearing is literally the most important part of Epic 7. And finally, things like equipment resetting is more a high level gameplay maneuver if you are looking at trying to essentially re-roll your substats. It's not something to be used lightly and so consider not really touching that. That's it from me, if you have any questions let me know, otherwise I hope this video has helped you. Uh, it took a while to make so yeah, bye.